Hello, Gen Zs. It is a new moment with you on Just Villa. On this edition, I have a package of mesmerizing pieces for you. Let me start with Michael Jaha. You know him, you know him. Hope you still remember. Uh, you recall in one of my Gist Villa editions, I showed you how Michael Jaha's song had influenced all walks of life, family, school, peer group, workplace, and church. But there was an important aspect of life that was absent. Yet this aspect captures the very essence of the song, which has to do with deception. Hmm. What is this aspect? It is politics. Politics, politics. As deception was the theme of the story in the song, it is also a prominent strategy of social influence in politics anywhere in the world. Just as a little tortoise deceived the elephant, as big as it was, a small band of individuals in power is able to deceive the Nigerian masses, despite their number. Just as the tortoise used the elephant as means to marry the king's daughter, politicians used the masses as means to capture power. In this context, having politicians perform Michael Jaha's song is nothing but a perfect blend and, you know, would be a fantastic sight to behold. This was the case at Abuja where the Court of Appeal ruled on the existing case between two conflicting factions of all progressive Grand Alliance, Africa. Guys, you all know that there have been a Game of Thrones playing out in Apuga. Two factions have been a daggers drawn over who controls the leadership of Apuga. On the one hand, there is a Dozian Joko who claims to be the rightful chairman of the party based on the party's national convention held at Oweri, Imo State, in 2019. On the other hand, there is Victor Oye who also claimed to be the rightful chairman based on another convention held at Okanambra State. Meanwhile, Chief Oye has now been succeeded by Barrister Sly, Ezo Kenwa, who has taken up the battle of, from Chief Oye. From 2019 to date, both parties have been locked in a dramatic legal battle, from High Court to Court of Appeal to Supreme Court, and then back to High Court. Guys, that's a long story. All I need you to know is how entertainment has been impacting on the political life. At the end of proceedings at the appeal court, Njoko-led faction were cited singing and dancing the Gwagwagwagwa song in a scornful manner while Sly and his faction were scurrying off the complex. Have a look. Very sad indeed. In a different de development, Governor of Anambra State, Professor Charles Soludo, joined in the Michael Jazz dance at the 33rd anniversary of Anambra State. Let's watch. <laughs> Now, guys, Governor Saluda was said to have been shocked at the leak of this video. He allegedly had instructed that no recordings of the dance be made. The people, you know, present obeyed the instruction except one aide who secretly covered the performance. 
Following this incident, it was rumored that the defaulter was sacked, but the governor later claimed that he had not fired any of his aides from, for any kind of misconduct. Anyway, guys, we have seen how entertainment has continued to influence all and sundry. It is true that politics controls our lives, directly or indirectly, but Nigerians are not excited about Nigerian politics. Yes, I'm telling you this for the truth. What is selling Nigeria overseas is not politics, because our politicians have, a, have sold their image. Tell me, guys, how many politicians of our ours can travel abroad to give lectures on democracy, the rule of law, and the judicious use of public funds? Absolutely none, except for very few individuals like Peter Obi. But in the entertainment industry, our celebrities and superstars are making Nigerians proud. Of course, overseas, abroad. Nigerian celebrities in Nollywood and music are being looked upon as role models and called upon to help boost entertainment industries of other countries. A country called Ghana is a much expected movie which premiered in 2024 and was produced by the famous Ghanaian actor Lee Wynn. To boost the Ghanaian movie industry, Lee Wynn invited three Nollywood superstars, Ram Sinua, Victor Swagu, and Charles Angurum, to star as a key characters in the movie. Following its release in May, a country called Ghana became one of the most talked about movie, both nationally and internationally. In a fascinating achievement for Ghana's film industry, a country called Ghana has been nominated for a prestigious award as one of the best movies at this year's All Half Film Festival in Brazil. In a similar vein, a popular action Hollywood star, Sylvester Mado, fondly called Shina Rambo, was invited by the Cameroonian film industry to feature in a movie titled Abakwa. As Shina Rambo stepped foot on the Cameroonian soil, a crowd of people swarmed around him in jubilation as though he was a president. Let's have a look. That was fascinating. Nigeria's entertainment industry is already a regional power. The onus is on the federal government of Nigeria to adequately finance the industry since it is making us proud, both nationally and internationally. Sometimes, Nigerian stars imitate celebrities of advanced countries such as the famous Chinese actor, Jack Chan. The general, a comedian and one of the best content creator, catapulted himself to fame after recreating Jack Chan's popular movie, Drunken Master. In the short film that went viral, the Nigerian skit maker styled himself as Jack Chan, fabulously imitating Jack Chan's stunts and martial arts. Let's enjoy, guys. <laughs>
That was engrossing, engrossing. Nigeria is endowed with amazing talents coming from the entertainment industry. Nigeria should invest in entertainment so that the industry can complete its already begun quest to equal and eventually outclass that of developed countries. The growth of the industry, when put in place, could also yield revenue for the country for the construction of essential infrastructure. But this can only happen when the federal government invests in the industry, you know, by sponsoring the purchase of sophisticated or modern equipment of cinematography. When the conditions of politics and economy are making Nigerians dejected, entertainment comprising films, comedies, skits, and music is significantly bringing solace and smiles to Nigerians. Oh. Away from this, are you aware that Africans tend to consistently view the world through the lens of the white men or the Western world? Very sad indeed. Many Africans have yet to be awakened to the intrinsic power deposited into them by the creator. For example, when we speak of political systems like democracy, we erroneously label the Western world as their founder without taking cognizance of the fact that democracy had been in existence for a long time in pre-colonial Igbo societies before the American War of Independence of 1776. Notwithstanding the ignorance of Africans, a few of them have dared to challenge you know, certain conventions placing the white men as gods over Africans. Father Angelo Chiedi Unebu is a priest of the Catholic Church, but he is not just a kind of priest. Father Angelo is a critic, or if you like, an iconoclast who uses a painstaking historical exploration to inspire new insights as regards religion, cultural, and political values. Father Angelo abhors the conventional practice by most Africans of depicting reality only from the perspective of the white men, while undermining the Afrocentric power of the black race. Recently, Father Angelo unveiled an Afro-styled Virgin Mary statue with distinct Igbo features created by his late cousin. This statue is now prominently displayed in front of Unebu's chapel on Omweze, or Kiwe Nimo State. Father Angelo encourages Africans to rethink their use of traditional Euro European depictions of the Virgin Mary, arguing that these images are inaccurate and were created to resemble Europeans rather than the actual Virgin Mary. He believes that this has led to a distorted view of religious figures, causing Africans to, you know, mistakenly perceive Jesus and Mary as white. Father Angelo advocates for Africans to abandon these European representations and instead create any, their own images that reflect the African characteristics, stressing their religious imagery should be relatable to local cultures and identities. Uh, and finally, guys, do you know that what powerful influence religion can exert on politics? This happens mostly during elections, especially in African democracies like Nigeria. During this time, powerful pastors who control thousands of congregations tend to persuade their members to vote for a political party or a particular candidate. In the same vein, Islamic clerics instruct Muslims to support their Muslim brother who is contesting for political office. Even when a Muslim imam does this, it is usually tagged as indoctrination or Islamic extremism. But guys, I thought all these stuffs were peculiar to Africa, but I was wrong. Yes, the forthcoming United States presidential election has become a source of religious war in the country. Now, guys, we have been talking about Islamic extremism without, you know, focusing or considering Christian extremism or indoctrination. Here is Greg Locke, a Tennessee pastor whose video clip is viral due to his inflammatory remarks against the Democrats. Pastor Greg warned huge members of East not to vote the Democrats, saying that those who would do so were not Christians, but demons. The pastor then threatened an insurrection, a rebellion, if the Democrats were to win. Wow, watch this video. I'm to the place right now, if you vote Democrat, I don't even want you around this church, you can get out. You can get out, you demon. You can get out, you baby butchering election thief. You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat in this nation. I don't care how mad that makes you. You get pissed off as you want to. You cannot be a Christian and vote Democrat in this nation. They are God-denying demons that butcher babies and hate this nation. Bunch of devils. I'm sick of it. 
Hey, we want to talk about the insurrection. Mm. Let me tell you something. You ain't seen an insurrection yet. You keep on pushing our buttons, you low down, sorry, compromisers. You God-hating communist America, you'll find out what an insurrection is because we ain't playing your garbage. We ain't playing your mess. My Bible says that the church of the living God is an institution that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And the Bible says they will take it by force. Very sad indeed. In a country falsely revealed as a model and the founder of democracy, we can see this bloodshed and threats of violence. Indeed, the November election will be one of the most interesting elections in the history of the United States. We impatiently, we are impatiently watching to see these events unfold. Gen Z's, that's all I have for you this, on this edition of Gist Villa. Remember, if you like my video, do not hesitate to like, comment, and share. Thanks a million for joining me. I remain authorized saying, see you next time. Bye-bye.